Now for more on preschool education here in China, we're joined in our Beijing studio by Professor Tong Jimo from the American Studies Center at the Beijing Foreign Study University. We're also joined by Professor David Moser, Academic Director of Chinese Studies at Capital Normal University. Welcome to you all. Now the Chinese government actually has made early childhood development a national priority, so there's so much to talk about. First of all, let's put things into context. The policy of one child policy, the effect of one child policy on early education, Professor Tong first. Well, I think that this is going to be a very, very important issue. I think it is right to prioritize the education <laughs> of that one child in the family because this is supposed to be not just the future of the family but also the future of this very nation. But once again, I think it might be a little bit too early for these kids to be kind of a preschool. I mean, think about uh, uh, kids at the age of three. It could be. It could be shockingly surprising to me. I mean, because these kids are not capable of cognitive processing. I mean, recognition of the basic symbols like language, for example. I mean, they are not even able to speak at that very time. The parents nowadays they make major investments in their children mm -hmm. in the education system. They don't want to lose at the start point. Professor Moser, what do you think of this? Well, I think that uh, we know from what we know about childhood education. That the you know the main thing is to give them a stimulating environment with lots of different with lots of input mm -hmm. and not necessarily a regimented environment. Mm -hmm. That is, give them lots of varied experiences, uh, and and let them explore the world on their own terms. But there there are a few areas which I think there's also evidence that it's that it's good to start early. One is language. Is obviously if a child starts learning mm -hmm. a foreign language, even just for fun or being around it, at the age of three, four, they'll learn it much better. And and other things like music. Mm -hmm. uh, are better, are, you know, the only way you can get a world-class classical pianist is to start them at the age of three, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but for most other things, I think uh, it's probably better just to give them a, a rich environment. That's enough. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. mentioned a very interesting point, the differences between free play versus group teaching. This is a different style between Western style of pre-education and Chinese style. So let's just take some time to ex examine the difference and then maybe we can reach a conclusion of which way is really better for say Chinese school in uh, Chinese children in such a context here. This is like a, one, a million dollar question for those <laughs> parents that are yeah. watching because mm -hmm. parents are not shying away of spending so much more just to send their kids to these international schools to in order for their children to enjoy a Western style of education. So teaching method first. So Western style of preschool theory, they focus on delivery of child initiated play, whereas Chinese programs are predominantly teacher centered with strong emphasis on mastery of knowledge, obeying authority and utilizing high structured activities. Professor Stone, which way is better for you? Well, I, I think it's very hard to say. I think, I, once again, I think I need to seek a kind of some kind of a uh, golden mean somewhere in between. I mean, on the one hand, I think Chinese education focus on this very teaching, doing all the talking. I mean, this cramming, this got the duck cramming way. I mean, uh, so students are supposed to be obedient, uh, lots of learning by rote memory and the recitation and with a focus on the Asian classics. But at the same time, I mean, students are not robots. I mean, they cannot just sit down over there, I mean, sitting in the cell with uh, being basically compelled to sitting in a cell-like classroom environment. But Western, and, and in this sense, I think Western way of teaching also enjoys considerable advantages in terms of providing an open environment mm -hmm. where student and teacher can interact uh, without focusing on one person and without actually, in a sense, students learning by road memory, but lots of interactive, lots of kind of um, uh, exposure to the real world, the wisdom, the realities, uh, the, uh, 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 in a sense, lots of real practical knowledge mm -hmm. instead of book, book knowledge. Can I add something to yeah, that? Sure. Uh, uh, there was a, a, a researcher many years ago named Howard Gardner at yeah, Harvard, right, at Harvard right. who, who, who did a lot of study on this comparative learning mm -hmm. between uh, skill learning and then just general problem solving learning. Mm -hmm. And he, he noted, for example, if you teach a child how to open a door with a key, uh, if, you sh if you put the key in the child's hand and direct them through it, they will learn very quickly how mm -hmm. to open a door. If you just simply give them the key and say, figure out how to open the door, it may take them longer. But in the process of learning, they've also learned a, a very important skill, which is general 
problem solving. Right. When they're faced with a new skill, later on that they have to learn, they can teach themselves. Right. So, but I agree with uh, Professor, Professor Tung that, that mm -hmm. there is a kind of a golden mean here because mm -hmm. you can't just throw children to the wolves and let them no. go on their own completely. Uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, there is something to say children Children are very good learners. Evolution has made them the best <laughs> to be expert learners. Right. So, an interesting research says, like you mentioned, scholars actually pointed out that teachers like group learning as not only efficient, but they also reflect Chinese culture. They call it a more superior way of teaching. Would you agree with that? Well, it's. It, it, it's hard to say. I mean, as an educator here in China, teaching almost like 25 years. I mean, I well, my 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 focus is basically college education. But then once again, see if you go to this early education, preschool education, I think that there's great potential for kids to learn and learn at a very young age, mm -hmm. and then to in a sense uh, to um, to combine this very classroom teaching environment with the kind of a free environment teaching and. Uh, back to what uh, um, uh, Professor Moses said, uh, I think that what we are try trying to, in a sense, to cope with is a challenge of Chinese students to, in a sense, to learn to uh, to learn problem solving in terms, not just in terms of learning the book knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. does our system kill creativity? In a sense, it it doesn't encourage. I won't say it kills, but then it doesn't encourage. Lots, of, uh, but there's lots of kind of encouraging in terms of learning the book knowledge first, and then upon graduation, you will be this very person capable of doing. Yeah, I think the I think that's a very interesting point. Uh, to, you know, this this issue of creativity. Mm -hmm. the, there there is a tr traditional notion in Chinese that you first must master the basic right. skills, the which classics. is called xi ben gong, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 then I said, well, until you've mastered the basic skills, how can you possibly be creative? Right. Whereas in the West, the notion is well, children are naturally creative. Mm -hmm. Let them create even at a very early age, mm -hmm. even if the results are not very masterful. Mm -hmm. So I think this is this is a kind of a tension. That, and I, I'd also point out another uh, very important thing. I think this notion of book learning and skill set learning, where you, you, you get a head start by, by teaching them very early you know, these, these skills, I think that was good in the old days, right. <laughs> meaning, meaning right. when we were growing yeah. up. But I, I think the world is changing so fast that you cannot be sure that in 20 years when the child grows up, that those same skills are, are going to be useful. Right, yeah, right, right. 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 They, they may be using something so different in terms mm -hmm. of, of computer technology That's skills. Right. You can't even imagine it now. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to prepare them for these uncertainties. That's right. And one distinct feature about Chinese preschool education is extra cur curriculum activities. On one hand, parents want their kids to have a happy childhood. And on the other hand, they don't want their children to fall behind. And how do you strike a balance between that? Just I think, once again, this is also a reflection of the crisis of Chinese education. On the one hand, I think the Chinese education focus on the so-called the development of the elite, the develop, to develop the brains of those mm -hmm. best of the best. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, that education system is also used as a way to create a new caste system. <laughs> I mean, universities, I mean, is supposed to be the, the, the real threshold that you have to cross so that you become a real qualified person in the society. And so this is also something I think that we need to cope with as a challenge in the future. I mean, parents must realize that education is not supposed to be for status. It's not for mm -hmm. a showy status, but it's all for developing the kids and developing that kids as a whole person. And we have actually a kindergarten guidelines here. This was first drafted in 2001 and then updated in 2012. It says intensive skill training is inappropriate for young children. Preschool uh, teachers are officially discouraged from teaching children uh, academic knowledge at elementary school level, yet many parents insist on doing so. So many classes for their kids, oh. it's very hard to not do so when you see everybody else are doing this. Mm -hmm. Uh, is learning academic matters so early really good for kids, Professor? I think I think it's the same thing we just talked about. Uh, uh, they, I, you understand the parents' desire to give them what they think is a head start, but actually, I, I think that learning to learning to learn and learning to explore are are so basic that that if you really want them to excel, they've got to have that as a basis before they even start. If you if you just teach them academic uh, aspects at a, two, at a young age before they're really ready, as you said, to cognitively 
absorb mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. then it becomes a kind of a rote process where the child is, is uh, mechanically applying rules instead of actively engaging. We've all seen the, the children who start violin lessons too early perhaps, and they are playing the violin, but it's a, it's, it's a robot they're right. sawing away and not someone who's actively feeling the music. Right. So I, I, th I think the notion of a head start is a good one, but I think it may be misguided in, this, in those particular cases. Mm -hmm. Let me just read this to our viewer and to you all first, and we can talk about it. Now, there is also a growing trend of younger students now studying mm -hmm. overseas. In 2015, there were more than 500,000 Chinese students studying abroad, and the number of children receiving kindergarten, preschool, and primary education abroad composed one-fifth of them. Can you believe it? On one <laughs> hand, that's the result of an income increase among many Chinese families. On the other hand, Chinese parents believe their children will get a better education overseas. I guess that put us back to the question we proposed, first of all, just which way is really good or, or better for Chinese young students, Chinese children? Well, I don't think there is a better way or a good, uh, see, a, a better way or a worse way. I mean, for better or for worse. I mean, school, I mean, children need, once they are of that age, they need to be exposed to this very general world, the world of reality, the world of wisdom, the world of everything that they should learn. And so uh, by, by taking a young kid to go abroad and study, I mean, that's good. I mean, as long as you are financially stable, financially qualified, I think it's great. It's, it should be a great experience. But then once again, I mean, if you are a Chinese kid, and, and so my, I'm basically old school, and I think that that kid needs to be well-versed first in the Chinese classics. I mean, a little bit of the classics, a little, a little bit of Confucianism, and then, see, uh, try something else. And so in that sense, you can find a comparative world, a different world that you might be exposed to, and find the real meaning and insight into that very world with a very basic perspective. So mm -hmm. how should parents make decisions whether to send their children to international schools or even overseas at a very early age? Um, there are some things to consider. Obviously, the family life is very important. I, I know several mm -hmm. Chinese yeah. uh, friends who have done this, and, and it depends on a different way. If you're capable of, of the entire family just emigrating to Canada or somewhere, mm. Okay, well, well, they need the parent to be around. They need the right. parent to be around. That's, that's my point. And I do know several parents who have, in fact, just sent their kid to a relative or to a friend or something. So they're, they may be there. They're in, a, they're in an English language and an English or Western environment, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you shouldn't uh, downplay the role of the family environment. You're, you're not there with your parents. Mm -hmm. that, that could actually cripple them it emotionally. They could be cultural orphan. Right? They could be cultural mm -hmm. orphan. And then the other thing you have to consider is what you just said. If, if you say, we're going to send them over there, it's going to solve all their educational problems. Yes, but you're going to get a kid who's culturally foreign. Right. And they, they, when you come back, they won't recognize this culture or have any part in it. Right. And do you, are you willing to, to pay that price? And I think that's a, something they need to think about. There's also CEO classes here in China <laughs> for preschoolers. And it's actually quite expensive. This is for age 3-year-old to 12-year-old. It costs 50,000 yuan or about 10,000 US dollars a year for one or two sessions weekly. How do you see this phenomenon? <laughs> That's absurd. I mean, the first word that comes to my mind is absurdity, is anti-life. I mean, basically, it was a very rude way to deprive a child of its natural growth. I mean, this is absolutely, I mean, uh, unacceptable. I mean, see, no kids can be a CEO at the age of three. I mean, this is, this is such a joke, I mean, in, in this, to, to my knowledge. And so, also, I mean, according to news, this is all fraud. I mean, they lack the basic equipment, they lack the basic management. I mean, see, student, I mean, basically, you are, man you are managing three years kids, very rowdy kids out there. I mean, how can they be CEOs? Well, they say they offer classes that develop CEO characteristics. Well, knowing what we know about the character of some CEOs, I don't think you want their kids. To, I don't think they want their kids to, to develop these sorts of, uh, you know, corrupt characteristics that most CEOs seem to engage in. If you're going to spend that much money just to make them a CEO, why not just pay them that salary once they grow up? I mean, if you if the idea is to make money, uh, but, but the other thing is, you know, with with companies. If it, not every child is obviously going to be interested in the corporate world. Right. I, I mean, that assuming. 
in, in fact, probably if, if I were an intelligent child at a certain age when I catch on what my parents are doing, the first thing I was, would do is rebel That's right. and say, forget <laughs> it. I'm not even going to be an artist. I, I'm going to be an artist. Yeah, That's only what an I artist. Would do, yeah.